Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of the Arizona real estate market, arm you with information so not only can you be well informed, but you'll be a hit at all the cocktail parties. Now, if you hear any noise in the background, my little senior analyst has woken up this morning feeling rather frisky. And since he's breaking in some molars, you may hear some bone chewing going on in the background. <laughs> I can't get him to settle down to save my life. So hey, at least he's not barking, right? So so a lot to go over today. We're going to take a dive into what we're going to call the small burbs, which is some areas outside of the Phoenix metropolitan area. What's going on there? Are we seeing the same inventory uh, situation that we have everywhere else? And then I'm going to touch, if, you, if you're watching this channel at all, you know that I've said that... Uh, uh, the January or February and March, we're going to have huge appreciation numbers, despite some YouTubers that have said that things are going to start crashing in February. And I'm going to put a little asterisk by this. Real estate agents are not economists. So don't watch YouTube and expect that a realtor is going to have all this knowledge about the market uh, that, that is going to be able to predict accurately what's going to happen for the year. Because you know what? There isn't anybody out there that gets it right. Zillow, Case Shiller, Realtor.com. Redfin, none of them get that right. So your local real estate agent is not going to be able to predict out more than three or four months either. They can try. They can tell you there's going to be a crash, but if they do, they're going to have to have some good data. Now, I saw some data the other day on home construction that is so far off base. It's by the arm-waving crasher that I talk about. And I'm going to have to touch on that a little bit because I want to show you that there's, there's always a headline and then there's the devil in the details. So I want to take a look at this. Uh, probably not tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to look at uh, homes above a uh, million dollars in the area and see what's going on with them. But uh, we really need to talk about that. So your local real estate agent, our job is to manage you through the minefield of regulations and to assist you in getting through the contract, not to be prognosticators of market conditions. But we do have access to data where we can show you what's going on now. So, you know, right now, here's our seven-day moving average. So it shows the blue line, the blue mass here is new listings coming on, and the red is homes under contract. Now, there's been a slight dip in pending sales, and it uh, kind of mirrors what this article says here, which is that, um, well, that's, let's see, I got the wrong one here. Oh, this is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. New home sales ebb. Is there really six months worth of inventory? That one's worth talking about. And I want to spend some time on it. So we're not going to do that today. But let's talk about what's going on with pricing before we start looking at the neighborhood, shall we? And what we're seeing is this. The monthly average sales price of closed listings across all of the MLS database has shown absolutely no sign of deacceleration in 2022 so far. How did we know that was coming? Because we saw the December numbers. Supply and demand has not changed. The latest reading for February 26th is 558942 bucks. This is not shocking given the absurdly lopsided market balance, but impressive for several reasons. Look at this. It's an increase of $11,246 in a single week, a rise of more than 2% in seven days. This is what the numbers were telling us when we were looking at them in January. In January, you can see how fast homes are selling. You can see, like today, we only have 4,800 homes on the market. You could see in January that we had such little supply that there was no choice but for prices to rise in February, even though we're starting to see sales start to come down a little bit because, quite honestly, people are getting priced out. Now interest rates are going up. But as interest rates were starting to increase, just starting to increase in February, at the beginning of February, people ran for the hills. And when I say ran for the hills, they ran for the hills to get their house. And in doing so, they pushed prices up 2% in a week. Now, my gut was telling me that we were going to be between 2.5% and 3% in appreciation for the month. But here we popped up 2% in a week. Will this continue? Not at that velocity, but we can expect that March is going to be equally impressive. So there's no uh, there's no crash coming yet. Now, what it says here is that there still may be many ill-informed observers predicting falling prices in the near term. They are very much mistaken. The fact that there are so many in itself is evidence that we are not in a bubble. When bubble conditions exist, there's almost universal jubilation and euphoria. 
Doubt only sets in after the peak has been reached and denial goes into overdrive. In other words, oh no, the market's not going down. That's not, this is a, I used to hear things like, it's a temporary price correction. The skip, tip skeptical reaction to predictions of further price rises is direct evidence that there's plenty of room left for greater phone, Phoenix home prices to increase. We've not got anything like the absurd overconfidence that characterized early 2005 and let us, meaning the Cromford market, Michael Orr, who's a mathematician, not a real estate agent, to call the bursting of the bubble in Q, the second quarter 2005. By the third quarter 2005, all the key market indicators were headed south, but very few paid any attention. Those that did pay attention kept quiet about it, sold their real estate holdings while it was still easy to do so. Here's the kicker. Please pay attention to the same mathematical signals now. They will not mislead you like human opinions will. And by human opinions, look around YouTube. You're going to get all kinds of opinions. But what is the data? What is the numbers telling you? And uh, we're going to take a look at some of the things that are going on right now. And if we look at the active listing count, let's take a look at some of the outlying areas. Let's go ahead and do it alphabetically here. And let's look at Apache Junction, which is the far eastern part of our valley here. And you can see that our inventory is at 73. I did have a YouTuber make a comment yesterday that said that looked like his zip code all of a sudden had a whole bunch of new listings. I looked it up. He had 38 listings, and there were only five in that zip code that came on. And there goes my senior analyst barking at the neighbor. So this is going to be quite interesting. I may have to jump up and make him be quiet. So <laughs> Or close my curtains. That'll do it. So so there's not a lot going on right there. 73. All right. I'm going to pause this for just a moment. Bear with me. That's what happens when you're live, folks. <laughs> I wonder how many of you I lost. Doesn't look like I lost many. So anyway, we're, we're just barely coming. Up. Well, we're hanging at, at or below 2021 inventory. So it hasn't even got up to 2020 levels yet. Now, remember when you got out here in March, in May, things really started coming down, March, April, May. And that's where we've been muddling along ever since. Now, the other thing to look at, let's go to Apache Junction over here. And let's see what's going on with closed listings. Listings over, uh, over, closings over list price. That's what I'm trying to say. And it is up it to 48%. The 300 to 4,000 range, 56%. An average of... $11,000. Now, what's involved in that average? Well, there's 1,098 homes, and when you look at this, this it says minimum over list price, $1. Maximum, 114000 That's what makes it so hard when people say, well, what should I bid? It's all over the map. Plus, keep in mind, real estate agents should never tell you what your purchase price should be because that's a great way to get sued. So, real estate agents should never say, here's what I would do. In other words, what you want to tell your client is, well, here's what's happening. Here's the bids that have come in so far. Here's where the prices are. What are you thinking? And you can give a little bit of guidance, but that's about it. So you can't be too nuts. This dog, did you quiet down the mortgage guy? No, you can still hear him. He's driving me crazy. Get over here, Ringo. He says, this is my, uh, my, senior analyst play duck sometimes this quiets him down so we're going to give him his duck now and see what happens maybe if he's chewing he'll shut up but look at this if you get there's um 94 no what is there 36 homes that sold in the 1.5 to 2 million range out in in uh oops it looks like it dropped it off here we're going to go to apache junction again um we're all over the place here. 74, 71% between 250 and 300, 41% in three to 400,000. And the 607,000 range, the average list price is uh, 32,000 over, but the minimum was five grand. The maximum over list was 74,000. So it's really hard to say, well, here's where I'd come in. Uh, you can look at the average over list, but it's, it's not really going to do you much. Now, Arizona City is south of. Uh, Phoenix area on Interstate 10. I'd say at least 45 minutes. Um, it's right next to the freeway, almost uh, almost an hour. And right now they're showing that 
on average, 34% of the homes are on your list. But let's go back to active listings in Arizona City first and take a look here. And let's see. Come on, you can cook. Throw the numbers up there. We are higher than 2021, but barely by three units. Looks like a big jump on the map. There's 24. There's 19 here, so, you know, five units. So just about where we were in 2020 so nothing earth shattering there and you can see that in the price ranges 300 to 400,000 the average is 2600 so Arizona City's pretty quiet by our market standards right now let's go out to Avondale and let's go to Avondale on this map on this chart it's not a map so Avondale here is showing the same thing. We're hugging right around uh, 2020 levels, 2021, but we're going down. But we started going down last year as well. So that part remains the same. And we look here, they're sitting there at about 40, 57% over list price, a little higher than what we're seeing overall in this market. So not a lot going on there. Uh, Casa Grande, is it Casa Grande or Casa Grande? So it's Casa Grande if you're local. So I'm going to click this off, put that on. Again, Casa Grande is south of Phoenix. About uh, um, It's before you get to Arizona City. So their listings have increased. They have 154 this year. We had 91 last year. So that's a good bump up. And let's take a look and see what's going on at over list price. That's one of the lowest around, 28%. So Casa Grande is... Uh, is looks like the place where you can have some relief in the three to four hundred thousand range with the minimum over list one dollar and maximum over list thirty thousand so uh, that that one looks like it's a little calmer huh what else have we got here i know there was we wanted coolidge um, coolidge is kind of let's say south of the chandler gilbert area you kind of go through the indian reservation and then pop out on the other side and there's coolidge and they have a whopping 33 listings, where last year they had 31. So they're not doing a whole lot more of improving there. And let me see what's going on price-wise. It's probably going to be like the rest of the valley here. And it's uh, it's only 33%. So that's not bad. Not bad. Three to 400,000 range. The average is uh, 9,500. So you don't have quite the buyer beat down down there that you do everywhere else. And let's move on to... Uh, let's see. There's a couple out here. Uh, Levine. No. Yeah, let's do Levine. So Levine is out in the West End, and their inventory the past couple weeks has come up to 33 versus 24. Nothing earth shattering. Uh, this is March of 2020. You can't even pay attention to that. There's nothing normal about that year. And let's click this off and take a look at Levine here again and see what's going on as over list price. Hang in there with me. We got some more numbers coming up. And they're down to 40%. So Phoenix metropolitan area is somewhere around 46%. And but they're much smaller numbers. Four to five hundred thousand. They've only sold 24. Minimum over list 100. Maximum over list 35,000. Now that could mean that somebody just priced their house too low. May have been one of those 72 sold listings. Um, Maricopa, you've seen Maricopa before. We've gone through that. Uh, well, let's do it as long as we're here, right? So Maricopa has seen a pretty large jump in listings. They're 200 versus last year at 89. I firmly believe that that's because there's so much new construction in Maricopa that people are moving towards the new builds than they are existing sales. And these numbers don't include new construction. So if we look at Maricopa, I'll bet you that the bidding wars have subsided a little bit. Yeah, 33%. So any three to 400,000 range. Um, it says maximum over list. Doesn't even say. Oh, it's down here. That's why. Um, $1 and 65 grand. All over the map. But much lower than you're seeing in, in other areas. So the outlying areas are kind of mirroring what we're seeing everywhere else. Um, and uh, here's Tolleson. They're about last year, not too much. When you get down in the 20s, just because you go from 20 to 23, isn't it? You know, yay, here we go. It's uh, uh, You're going to see the same kind of bid numbers. 
and then you got to get out like Wickenburg. Wickenburg is northwest of the valley. 67 homes versus 39. Twice the number of homes. That's pretty noticeable. So let's see what's going on in their bid operation. And Wickenburg is down here. And let's see what pops up. So look at that. The, lo the lowest one we've seen so far. Percent of sales over list. 8%. Wickenburg's your town, folks. So, but there's very little velocity. See, three to four hundred thousand, only five homes sold. Two hundred fifty to thousand uh, to three hundred thousand, uh, one house, and it was four thousand dollars over, over list. So we jumped through that pretty quick, but I hope that gives you an idea of what's going on in these outlying areas. They're not as aggressive in most cases as it is in Metro Phoenix area. But you know, if you're living in Phoenix, you're definitely not going to want to live out there and then drive all the way into town here. That's a that's a brutal commute. Casa Grande, they got a lot of businesses going down there. There's that big electric car company. There's a big park going in down there, kind of like a little mini Disneyland. And so there's opportunities there. And so that's why they're a little busier than what we see in some of the other areas. Tomorrow, I believe tomorrow, we're going to start looking at the upper end Paradise Valley, North Scottsdale, Carefree, Cave Creek, Chandler, Gilbert, Homes over a million and a half bucks. What can you get? That should be fun. Have a great day. Hopefully my senior analyst will keep his doggone mouth shut tomorrow. Take care. Mm -hmm.